Hello everybody, it's Whiskey11. Welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Harrier, the AV-8B Harrier's INS system, what it means, and how we're going to align it. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on the two different types of INS alignment that we can do. One of those is the sea INS alignment, and the other is the land-based INS assignment with manual entry of the coordinates into the system. And it can be a little bit of challenging to do the land one, but the sea one is pretty straightforward and easy. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to zoom through this here pretty quickly. And it, it happens pretty organically as part of our startup procedure for the Harrier. So it, it actually ends up working out pretty well. Before we get started, though, we do need to talk to our ground crew and we need to turn on the ground electric power. Once it's turned on, you will see SINS cable turned on, or something to that effect up here in the upper right-hand corner. SINS data cable is now connected. SINS stands for C INS system. INS is your inertial navigation system. It is the cable that they use to align the Harrier's INS with the carrier's inertial navigation systems. And uh, without ground power being enabled on the carrier, you cannot do a CINS alignment. So once we've done that, we can just start the Harrier up like normal, turn on the battery, turn on the pumps, turn on the fuel flow, the engine control, grab oxygen while we're over here. Let's get this gal started up. And of course, everything comes up and starts flaring and screaming at you because, you know, Harrier. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> Oh, man. Some days. Engine RPM is climbing up. And as soon as we get to the magical 92, we're going to crank this guy and close our our canopy. And 92. And take it up. And now the engines are started. So let's get everything uh, turned on lights-wise. And... We've got our lights are all turned on. From here, we need to turn on our DDIs, our displays. And we want our right display to go to the EHSD, which is this button here. And from here, now we need to get and look behind our control stick and move this over to C, which is the first tick up. And what you will see is this timer will start going up and it will start doing the INS alignment. Again, this requires the SINS cable in order for that to work. So you have to start with the SINS cable turned on. The other part of INS alignment is that you have to keep the parking brake on. And the parking brake on the Harrier is actually buried over here behind the throttle. And uh, if you do not turn on the parking brake, it'll actually stop the INS alignment and you'll have to re-go through this. So what you'll see will happen here is the time is going to go up. The qual is going to eventually start to turn into a timer. And then once it says OK, after the timer has completed, we can switch it over to nav on our INS alignment switch, which is down here. Now, there are two other options of INS alignment that we're not going to talk about. Uh, one involves gyroscopic INS alignment and... Um, well, basically, it's very imprecise and not very useful. And the other is the in-flight INS alignment, which uses, I believe, the GPS to figure out where you're at and um, also not super accurate. There are some other things that we need to talk about, too, with regards to last saved heading INS alignments. We're not going to talk about that in the, this video because, quite honestly, we could go on for days with it. So while we're doing everything else, I guess we'll just repeat our startup video because, uh, well, <laughs> let's face it. Might as well get this bird started up and ready to go. Make sure our flaps are turned on. Set our take off our nozzle stop lever to the correct one. Get our lights rolling. Although, you know, if you're going into a combat situation, I guess lights really aren't super important. But we can actually see here now that our qual time is starting has come up. Uh, we got about 60 seconds. And with this, our HUD actually comes up. And that's the other part that is missing from... Uh, you know, the startup procedures, how you get the complete HUD here with all of the horizontal lines, the, the attitude ladder, is by completing the INS alignment. 
uh, at least to the point where the, the timer continues to count down. Failure to do that means that uh, you will not have a complete INS alignment. You will not have a complete HUD. And uh, it's really difficult to fly this aircraft and land it without having the complete HUD to tell you what it is. And so as we get down here, we got 24 seconds to go, I think. Oh, all important uh, sidewinder and sidearm tone knob. We need that guy turned on, obviously. <laughs> got the oxygen switch this time, though. That's down here. That's important if you plan on taking off. So the, what is an INS system? Well, it's inertial navigation system is what it actually stands for. And, and what it is, is it's it's basically your, how your aircraft knows where it's at. And on these modern aircraft like this, it, it's how we get our moving map on our DDI. It's how we know where our wave points are at in relation to the aircraft. It's how we navigate. I mean, it's that important. It literally controls every aspect of navigation. That's why we need it. So the qual time is now at 0.7 and it says OK, which means we can come back here and switch this all the way over to the nav, which from the C position is going to be two clicks to the right or Two clicks clockwise. Now, before you take off, it's super important to go ahead and disconnect your ground power and you will see that the SINS data cable will get removed. And now we are entirely internal for our navigation system. SINS data cable is disconnected. So from here, our next step is to go ahead and do a ground INS alignment. So give me one second while we switch on over. All right, welcome back. So now ground alignment is going to be a little bit different. We don't have to have ground power enabled in order for us to have our INS alignment. It is a little bit more complicated in the sense that uh, it takes a little bit more time because it requires manually entering in your latitude and longitude as well as the magnetic uh, declination, which if you're in the Caucasus, I think is six degrees east and... Don't ask me for the declination for the Persian Gulf map. I honestly don't remember. However, you can look that up on the forums. So with this, we are going to start this up in basically the same way. We're going to go ahead and get our battery turned on. Got to get our pumps turned on. Fuel flow, computer, grab our oxygen switch while we're here. And let's go ahead and crank this sucker. So once again, all of the Christmas tree lights are going full freaking bore here while we uh, get this old girl started up. And I uh, just realized that my throttle did not have it set correctly. So uh, while we're waiting for that to ramp up to 92, we'll go ahead and we'll just grab our interior lights, even though they won't turn on. Grab the ejection seat. We're at 92. And powering on up. Let's go ahead and close the cockpit here so that we don't have to listen to that. So while that's starting up, we'll turn on our DDIs, and once again, we're going to go over to our EHSD, which is, uh, well, we need the engines to fully start. There it goes. So now we've got this blank screen over here. Let's zoom in. We've got this blank screen over here, and what we want to do is we want to hit the data portion. Now, how you know that your aircraft is completely unaligned is quite simple. This number set up here is going to read straight zeros all the way across. Declination over here, zero. Magnetic variation, zero. Everything is over here is zero. So if, in order for us to actually do an alignment, we need to come over here to the AC tab. But before we do that, we need to turn on our radio stack because this is how we enter in everything. So we got to turn on our brightness and our volume knobs. And over here is going to be extremely important. There is one other piece of data that we also need to grab before we do this alignment. And that, to get that, we need to go to the map. And in this case, that's hitting F10. What I like to do is I like to scroll in all the way as far as it'll go. And we're right here. And you can see in the upper left-hand corner, we actually have a number. This is giving us 42 degrees, 10 minutes, 55 seconds north, 42 degrees, 27 minutes, 51 seconds east at 148 feet for the altitude. Now, what I like to do is I have multiple monitors, obviously a YouTuber, so we got multiple monitors. I like to open up another uh, screen and have a notepad thing in there, and I like to turn it on, and I just enter, you know, type in 42.10.54 north, 
And then go 42.27.50 east. And then 148 feet. Uh, the the at a altitude doesn't really matter too much because that's all gets set elsewhere. Uh, but uh, we we don't need that. We do need the magnetic variation number, which again is six east for. Uh, the Caucasus region, which is where we are currently at. So in order for us to do a uh, ground-based alignment, what we need to do is we need to actually set our latitude, longitude, and that magnetic variation. To do that, we're still on the data page. Down here in the lower right corner, you can see it says AC. You're going to click on that button, and over on the left-hand side is going to see some options pop up. So I'll go ahead and click it. You can see over here we have position, and then we have a number pad up here. Click on position again, hit the N on the number pad, and of course it doesn't work. <laughs> Try this again. Hit the N on the number pad. You'll see N pop up, and now we just need to enter in the data, which for us, I'm going to move this over to the other side here so I don't have to look as far, is going to be 42, 10, 54, and that's north, and then we hit enter. Then we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit position again, and this time you'll see that there is a zero added here. We are in the eastern part. We have eastern, um, that'd be longitude. <laughs> I have to remind myself sometimes. And it is now 0, 4, 2, because it was only 42 degrees, 27, 50, enter. So, coming back here and looking at this number, you will see that we had to add this zero here, and that's because there's obviously a lot more degrees of longitude and then latitude. So we have to add the zero in front of it if, if, if this is just a two digit number. There is no hundreds position, so it is zero four two. You'll see over here that we have all of this data here. So now we need to come down here to this next one, which is magnetic variation, and we need to hit E for east 6.0 enter. You will see that it has come up six degrees. It says it here. Now from here, we can come all the way down here and we need to rotate this switch clockwise to INS ground. And much like on the C uh, alignment, you have to have the parking brake enabled. So you'll see that the timer is going up. It says it's not OK. It will eventually start a countdown timer and say that it is OK. And all this is super important information. And again, the information that you enter in here is going to be in the traditional latitude longitude coordinate system. It's not going to be in a decimal system like it's reporting here. The uh, radio stack here always wants it in degrees, minutes, seconds, not degrees, minutes, seconds in decimal. So it's a little confusing. Just bear with the system. It's degrees, minutes, seconds for the INS alignment. And again, F10 menu, upper right hand corner after zooming in all the way. Uh, it doesn't need to be super precise for this to, to work correctly and get you close enough. But that that number right there, it works out pretty well. Um, the one of the things that I started to talk about with the C alignment was the uh, the ability to use the last known heading, and quite honestly, I don't ever mess with this because uh, every multiplayer server I play on, like through the Inferno, you start off with no saved heading, and therefore it's not worth actually, uh, you know, talking about and, and going through that. There are other videos out there if you guys want to check that out. Maybe I'll do one in the future, but uh, this is how we do this alignment. And from here, the system is exactly the same as it was on the C. Once this countdown timer starts going down, we wait till it says OK. And so while it's doing its thing, we're going to set up everything else, set these to 60, turn on our lights, make sure our flaps are turned on, make sure our sidewinder slash sidearm growl is selected, engines are already started, we've got lights on, uh, we can come over here to the engine panel to make sure that it's working correctly. You can do all this stuff in the rest of your startup procedure while you're waiting for your INS to finish its alignment. Don't forget to turn on your RWR, your expendables, AKA your flare and chaff, and turning our, uh, we must not have the ECM pod, but if you have the ECM pod, turning it to standby uh, is uh, always a good idea when you are on the ground because you don't need it. And we will talk about this panel in a future video, I promise. So 30 seconds to go. Let's finish our pre-start here. 
think we're all there. Oh, no, we got these switches. And I continuing down the other side, we need our lights, landing lights on for taxi. And I think we're all pretty much there. Oxygen switches on. Very important. Don't forget that. You will pass out at altitude. Seven seconds to go. And once it gets to 0.7 OK, we will be able to switch it over. There's 0.7 OK. Switch it to nav, which is just one more click now. Now we have our inertial navigation system set up while we're on land. And... Those are the two primary methods that I use when I'm playing the Harrier in order to do INS alignment. Anyway, I hope these, this video has really been a help to you guys. I know I had to look some of this information up myself. It can be kind of confusing, especially this land-based one. If you've never done it before, uh, it can be a real pain in the butt, but you'll get used to it. Uh, one of the common things that I struggled with uh, with the land-based one is oftentimes the, these displays over here will time out. And in order to get them back, all you have to do is hit the AC button again, which is this, this panel down here. So long as you're in the EHSD, which is the moving map, data, A slash C for aircraft, and that gets you this page. When you want to go back to the EHSD, just hit the data. There's your EHSD. And you are good to go. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, Whiskey 1-1, I'm going to sign us out of the gaming lounge. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.